we're going to write an introduction to our uh, piece of experiment, and this states all these wonderful grand things. Firstly, it looks into the past literature, it looks at what's been done, so it's previously been established that the height of Republic clone troopers and stormtroopers is not significantly different. However, their weight was found to differ significantly, with stormtroopers exhibiting a tendency towards higher or greater weight. In etiology and practical significance of this difference is as yet undetermined. So although this is completely uh, a, a ridiculous Star Wars analogy, the tone of the introduction is actually fairly common to that of published literature. And that's kind of how you would format what are your, your introduction of what has gone before. What we already know and the context of the piece of research that's now about to be um, conducted or explained. It, and so uh, within an introduction we might, might want to explain, well, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, and explain some of the suggested causes. So one proposed cause is that non-clones have managed to infiltrate the stormtrooper ranks. And then we might have, uh, from other literature, some estimates indicate the non-clones may account, or that non-clones may account for 5% of stormtroopers, something like that. Because you can't state that unless you've got a reference. I, I will have to make a reference up. for the purpose of this, this example. I don't normally make references up in my research, only when there's nothing that supports my um, Experiments. So still in, in, in introduction phase, non-clones may have done this to exploit the individual socio-economic benefits of stormtrooper life. So now I'm speculating as to why my proposed hypothesis might be right. Why does it seem reasonable that you'd find non-clones within the Stormtrooper Army. To me, it doesn't seem like an attractive career choice. Um, they're generally considered quite disposable individuals. But it may have its perks. So they may get paid well. Um, they have security in terms of accommodation. They have the camaraderie of working within that team. And they have a job and financial security just risking their life and limb every day. Okay. Um, and if this hypothesis is correct, we would expect heights not to differ because heights would, would be identified very quickly. So if you were trying to secretly infiltrate into the ranks of stormtroopers, you'd first want to make sure at least you had the same height so you didn't stick out like a sore thumb. Um, amongst other stormtroopers. So that's why it's reasonable that we didn't find a difference in heights. I, su I suggest, again, within this idea, the context that I'm suggesting that there's non-clones within the um, stormtrooper army. However, it is conceivable that the weight of non-clones could differ from that of clones having the same height, perhaps due to differences in metabolic rate between the clones, who should all roughly have the same, and other humans, who perhaps don't, because they're genetically very different. Uh, and then I've explained in my introduction why I'm going about it. I'm investigating this technique uh, for detecting um, non-clones. I'm saying that uh, whilst detection of non-clones could be achieved using direct comparison of DNA sequences, this is prohibitively costly. Therefore, we propose to use dental arch comparison to identify the probability that non-clones are serving alongside clones as stormtroopers. Ridiculous. But we carry on, and now we generate some form of materials and methods, basically how we're going to do this. And actually, this... What I'm uh, going to talk about briefly, this, I say that we are going to measure the dental arch using 3D um, profilometry. This is where you run a stylus along the surface of the uh, dental arch and record its profile, and then you can compare that with another one. Some of you may end up using this kind of instrumentation within research projects. Um, certainly my colleague, Lee Fong, every year has... Um, 
postgraduates working on this system, so or these with these systems. So this is not so far fetched. This is actually something some of you may end up uh, doing within your projects, albeit not to compare stormtroopers and Republic clone troopers. So what I'm saying is that we use a certain instrument um, to measure the 3D profile. We use some software to find the difference, and we report some figure of merit, some measurement uh, of similarity. And all we know is that comes out of the software. And we could dig a bit deeper and explain what that is, but that's what, not really the purpose of this session. And then I'm saying that there was a sample of 500 um, individuals was randomly selected. The idea being that that sample is sufficient to at least capture a few um, non-clones. And I've stated that I, I'm going to compare my results against a uh, significant level of 5%, in keeping with previous work. And then there's this other factor. We're making a physical measurement. And so I don't just want to measure things once, because I understand there might be some variation in my measurement technique. To, so to assess how much the measurement might vary, to get some idea of uh, variation, we're actually going to repeat the measurements five times. So I'm going to get five for each individual that I measure their dental arch. Well, um, in fact, let's imagine this figure here, this sim similarity figure, is the similarity to Django FET. And we're going to measure that five times just to get an idea of how much those uh, measurements vary. And we're going to analyze the results using this thing called one-way analysis of variance to test the null hypothesis that all stormtroopers have the same dental arch as Django Fett. Now, analysis of variance it is simply a way of comparing multiple means, one-way analysis of variance. So last week we looked at a t-test. A t-test takes two different means and compares them and tells you whether the probability that they come from the same distribution. But if we've got multiple um, sets of means, as we will do here, because we're going to have five measurements from 500 stormtroopers, And we want to compare the means of all of those groups of five. So 500 means we want to compare. And we want to know if there's a statistically significant difference between any of them. And analysis of variance allows us to compare all of those means simultaneously. Whereas the t-test allows us just to compare uh, two means. So this allows us to compare... multiple 